Hey YouTube, so today we have a Kia um, van. I think this is what the Sedona van. And um, then as we start it up, we have the check oil pressure light on. So the owner saw my video about how I flushed the motor out and he said, can I do something with this for him? And uh, I was like, sure, bring it by. I've got something else I want to try too. So today we're going to do something a little bit different from what we normally do. Um, and the reason why I'm going a little bit faster. Now you notice you I step on the gas, you hear that noise there? Okay. Because you're not getting oil. Hear that rattling sound there? Well, that's because the oil pressure is not up to what it's supposed to be, and the engine is starved of oil. So when I give it gas, the valves rattle more. So what we're going to do is flush it out, and I'm going to show you a method you can use to flush it out. Um, something else about this motor that was kind of peculiar to me is um, whenever I take the dipstick out, or if I take the oil cap off, it's a vacuum. <laughs> a very prominent vacuum at that. Almost like opening a soda bottle, but instead of it pushing air out, it's sucking air in. So, we're going to take a look to see if we can address that issue. My thought on that is the PCB valve is clogged up. Yesterday, um, this car came in and the guy had the light on. He thought maybe he just needed an oil change, so we changed the oil for him like he requested. But then um, he realized he was having another problem other than the oil change. So, check that out. Isn't that pretty neat? And that's, that's not pressure, that, that's suction. Okay. So, uh, we're going to take this valve cover off and see what it looks like up under here. The valves and then uh, we'll have a better idea about the flesh and then uh, we'll go into that and I'll show you that. So stick around, um, hope you enjoy this tutorial. At the end, if you have any questions, please comment, post, chat, share this with the world. And, uh, oh yeah, subscribe. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the valve cover off and as you can see, we do have some oil and stuff in there. So not as bad as what I thought it was going to be like, so um, pretty rough down in there. So we'll uh, get this thing flushed and we'll get set up and start doing the flush and clean all this stuff out. So the first thing we'll do with this uh, here Sedona after we've taken the valve cover off is uh, you know, we'll clean that off and notice how uh, it's got all that oil and gook in there. Today's product we're going to use is brake parts cleaner because it's great. As a matter of fact, O'Reilly's brake parts cleaner. I'll give them a shout out for that because it's a great product. Um, we'll spray it down and if you've seen my other videos, you already know what this stuff's going to do to this oil that's cooked on to this valve cover. So, but by the end of the process, it'll be quite clean. Now also when it's caked on thick like that, you may want to take a um, brush and um brush it down or you can just use a whole bunch of this stuff and you know but i find that if you take this and kind of wet it down and then use a brush to kind of brush it away that'll save you a little bit of money this stuff is i'm not sure of the pricing where your area is but uh it's it's about four or five dollars a can roughly um unless you have you know a commercial discount or something like that Anyway, um, as you can see, it's already working. So I'm just going to like spray that down for a little bit, let it sit, and then I'm going to get my brush, and I'll go over it. I use an airbrush with a wire attachment to it. But like I say, I could just actually sit here and I'll pull black that off like that, but I don't want to waste all my chemical. You know, you know the chemical does great. See that? sit here and do that all day long. It'd probably take me about three cans to get it clean, but like I said, I'm going to use my brush to really knock it loose, and then I'll use the chemical to uh, just really kind of polish the thing all out. Look how clean that stuff has gotten out already. Alright. 
this right here is just the the old the old um, gasket material valve cover gasket this is actually your spark plug tube seal the spark plug tube gasket seals okay pull those out there and, and get some new ones um, at this point these are hard and brittle and cracked um, as you can see that's just you know, it's, it's not pliable at all it's, it's actually cracking in my, my hand there so that's trash and you see the little trash that's left on here so we'll clean this up and then we'll go and clean up the motor part oh there's my dog hey dog you coming to do some work you coming to do some work you gonna do some work today huh you gonna do some work today you gonna do some work today or you just want to eat all right we'll be right back okay so now we have our air tool here you see how that just knocks it right on off when you spray it down As you can see, this is pretty thick stuff. Now, I know this isn't exactly what we said we were going to be doing the video on, but um, <laughs> I did a video like this before one time and someone said, well, how did you clean the valve cover? You didn't show us to clean the valve cover. So I hope this helps my audience members that wanted to see me cleaning the valve cover, the process I use. Like I say, you could just spray this thing off, but you'd be using a couple cans of cleaner to do that. Or um, if you use a cleaner and a brush together, See how that comes off? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish cleaning this and then we'll get to the motor part and uh, I'll come back and let you see what it looks like clean. So one quick note here, this in the corner right here is a camshaft position sensor. So you want to be careful if you're using a brush to clean that because you don't want to damage that camshaft position sensor. But you see how much oil is built up on that? That's going to give that thing a hard time reading that camshaft position sensor as it gets built up, as it builds up there. So you definitely want to clean that off. You might want to take that off and hand clean it instead of putting um, the brush onto it. Or you could just use the spray cleaner and clean it off. But, you know, be careful with that because you don't want to break it. Some of those things are quite expensive. Bought one the other day for a car and it was $178. <laughs> yeah, and as a matter of fact, I think it was a little bit smaller than that one. So be careful when you see any type of electronic sensors like that when you're using um, wire brushes. And stuff. Okay, we're going to keep cleaning. I'll come back once this thing's clean. Still cleaning. <laughs> Stuff in here was kind of thick, part to lose down in these little crevices here that's pretty hard to get down into with your brush but um we've got the overall thing pretty much clean i'm going to rinse this thing off now get some more cleaner and then we're going to put it onto the car um, because that process i'm going to need this valve cover on the car in order to do the um flush that i need so that the oil won't get everywhere. But I wanted to clean that out by hand first and show you how to do that. Um, it's a good thing to go ahead and take, it's a good thing to go ahead and take that out um, because um, you can hand clean it. And then once you hand clean it, you can put it back on and 
and proceed with your fresh. But uh, these things usually have a lot of oil baked up really bad on them. And um, like I say, if that falls down in the motor, that can clog up your fuel pump. I mean, not your fuel pump, excuse me, your oil pump, your oil pump screen, oil filter, etc. So now that we have this thing clean, we're going to rinse it off and then we'll put it on the car and we'll proceed to the next step. Alright, now that we have our valve cover clean, we can go ahead and install our valve cover gasket. After you clean your valve cover, I do recommend let this valve cover dry before you put the gasket in there. You don't want to get any of that cleaner stuff on your gasket because if it does, you run the risk of damaging your gasket. Um, so let it dry good and then you can put your gaskets in there and then you can install it back on the car. So. Uh, I guess you can see a big difference here from the way it did look before as opposed to the way it looks now. I could spend a few more minutes and clean it up a little more, but um, I've got some other things I need to do. And I need this valve cover on the car, so we're going to show you how to put that gasket in there. And then I'm going to proceed on with the other things I need to do with the car. Alright, so here's our valve cover gasket box. To come with a valve cover for both sides. It's for a Kia V6 2.3 06 to 08 model. You know, she got one valve cover for the left, one valve cover for the right. So, now, a common mistake a lot of people make when they're opening these gaskets, they'll take their knife and they'll go down through here and cut that slit. Be careful doing that because if you do, you might mess around and cut the actual gasket. What I like to do is kind of go through the side and cut that side right there because I know the gasket's not going to be there and then I'll come here and just like cut like this that little tip piece right there so we can open the box now and then you can just slide your gasket out without damaging it see how close it is to that lid if you slide that thing that knife across through there like that you run the risk of cutting that gasket in half and you got to go back and buy you another gasket and explain to the auto parts store guy what you did and you know, not the best moment of glory. So you'll notice the gasket. We've got one for the front, one for the rear. Alright, let me figure out which one is which, then we'll be right back. Okay, so now we have our gasket installed. Um, one thing about these rubber gaskets, you don't want to, or neoprene, whatever this thing's made of, you don't want to pull and stretch this thing. You want to place it roughly where it goes and then once you get it in place where it goes just press down okay on the side of the gasket there you'll see these little tabs there and that tab is to lock that into the cover so push that down nice and even don't take your finger and, and pull across like that because that will actually stretch it what you want to do is just come along and just nice evenly push it down where it's supposed to be after you line it up you want to line it up first just go through and push it down. Okay. For those of you who are wondering why I didn't clean the outside of the cover, that's a different step. Or it could be a different video either way. <laughs> Right now we're focusing on the inside of your motor, so um, you can always clean the outside before you do this type of work or after you get finished. So we'll push that down in there like so. Now your cover is ready to install. Installation of um, this cover is the reverse of taking it out. Now also sometimes you may have a gasket that doesn't want to seat in place where you know, we don't want to lock in, it might keep falling out or something. And it is okay to take a little bit of silicone and put under that gasket to hold it in place. You know, maybe about four little dabs, you know, here, 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 whatever. Wherever, you know, it's falling out, that'll be fine. Don't use too much. Uh, just enough to kind of make it tacky and hold it in place. Alright, so that cover's now ready to go on. We'll install that cover and proceed to our next step. Okay, so... As we can see here on this car, it has been starved of oil, that's why the oil pressure light is on. But, and you can also look at the valve, well the, um, excuse me, the camshafts, and you see how 
dark that is. This car has really been abused <laughs> as far as oil changes. You've got the build up there. Um, obviously, it's built up deep in there in the passages probably as well and that's why it's starving itself from oil and the oil picked up screen and tube is probably clogged up as well so we're going to run a flush through that but first we're going to clean all this top gook off and then we'll run the flush through it just want you to see what this motor looked like um, before we did that um, <clears throat> normally if I have big chunks of oil and debris in a car what I'll do is I'll take a vacuum cleaner and a chisel and chisel that big stuff out and I'll use the vacuum cleaner to suck it out because you don't want those big pieces falling down in there. That's a piece of the old uh, valve cover gasket right there and look how brittle that is. I mean that's just, that's trash, you know, don't, don't try to take that out and put it back in your car because you're not doing yourself any good there. Um, and these spark plug tube seals, sometimes you'll pull your spark plug your spark plug out and there'll be oil all around it. Well, the reason for it is because this tube seal has failed. All right, so um, once you pull your valve cover off, sometimes, um, depending on the manufacturer and the car, they'll sell these uh, valve covers with the grommets, well, with the seals or without the seals. Always get it with the seals. If you're going to go through the trouble of pulling the valve cover off and replacing it, go ahead and replace these seals inside there. I mean, that one is, you know, brittle and well, it's still kind of pliable actually, but it's hard. <laughs> so um, the other ones broke apart. They were on the valve cover when I took it off. Here's your valve cover gasket. I wouldn't try to reuse that either. Uh, get a new one. What will happen over time is these things will fail and then it will start leaking out oil. Down here is your exhaust manifold. If the oil leaks off of your valve cover, out from under your valve cover onto your exhaust manifold, you're going to have an oil smoking problem. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing cleaned up. Um, today we're using brake parts cleaner to dissolve and clean this oil out of here. Um, we're going to do the front half first. and. Uh, then we'll do a flush and then I'll pull it, tear it apart and we're going to show you what the back looks like. I'm purposely not going to take that one out yet because I want to run the flush through it and so you can see what it looks like if you hand clean it and flush it as opposed to just flushing it and not hand cleaning. In the back it will just be flushing, no hand cleaning, the front will be um, hand cleaning this portion and then I'll flush it and um, you'll see the difference there. Okay, so as I was saying, this off here but one this oil here but one thing that um, I do I can't do it while filming this stuff I want you I just want you to see how thick this crud is you see how thick that, sh that shake is there and um, you don't want this stuff falling down in the motor or to clog up your passages so what I do is I use a vacuum cleaner as I'm chiseling this stuff out okay I'll take a vacuum cleaner and suck out those chunks after I finish chiseling or whatever. Um, you want to get this oil off because this will hold heat and help to wear out your motor. Not to mention it's going to starve the motor of oil and things like that. And I guess some of you say, well, it's all on top. It's not down in the clearance. But you see, like I say, you see those chunks falling out of there. Okay. Those chunks could fall down into your oil passages, clog up your oil screen. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what's happened here. I mean, you can see some chunks down, down in there that are loose and just floating around. You do not want stuff floating around in your motor, people. So, um, I said we'll hand clean this, and then we'll take our vacuum and uh, suck all this stuff out. All right, you see how thick that is. Ooh experiment piece we're gonna save this for another video that I can do an experiment on yeah, you see that you did not want that in your motor people not at all all right so I like to say we'll clean that out we're gonna hand clean the stuff out uh, the same way I was cleaning the valve cover with the brush and stuff we'll go through all that uh, with the brush and uh, this thing's gonna look totally different once I finish with it and um, then we'll proceed on with our flesh all right, so we've chiseled away some uh, of the oil, and as you can see, it's already starting to look clean. Next step is I like to take my brush, my airbrush, and go over this.
I guess you're saying, well, dang, you're using a brush and you're going to distribute this, the, the debris all over the motor. Well, the brush actually breaks it down, grinds it down into little smaller pieces. And then also, after using the brush, I have an air gun here that um, puts out a very good brush. And I'll use that to blow it out. And like I said, I use the vacuum cleaner also to suck out the large chunks. Which are, this car, particular car has very tight crevices, so I can't really get the vacuum down in there like I want to. But the air tool does a very good job of blowing it out. And the brush head does a very good job of grinding it down. Which will make it easier to get it out of the motor. Like I said, this stuff is hard, cooked on, baked on oil. So, once you get all the big stuff off, all right, hang on, we're gonna blow it off. We'll blow all that out. Now, it's the magic. We'll take some brake parts cleaner, and you don't want to spray the brake parts cleaner first, and then spray the the air because it could blow up in your eyes. And this stuff is um, it, it, it is flammable too. So if you have any open sources of flame, you don't want that around, and you know it doesn't smell the greatest either. But it works very good. So we'll use that the final step to clean this off. Like I said, this is a top portion, and then for the plus at the bottom, so um, I'm gonna run. Actually, I'm gonna run the brake parts cleaner through the engine too. See how that dissolves that oil out of there. Also, before you put your valve cover on, you want to prep your surfaces with a valve cover. Hot gasket will make contact. Make sure that's clean. See that debris and stuff in there? You don't want that to get in there where your valve cover, where your new valve cover gasket's going to be. I mean, it just kind of will mess it up. Also, you notice when I took these coil packs out, they're marked one, two, three, and I could have disconnected them. I still can. But now that they're marked, I know exactly which hole they came out of. One, two, three. So, um, I always like to mark my stuff whenever I'm taking it apart. That way when I put it back together, it makes it a lot easier. And look how that brake parts cleaner is working on that oil. We're going to spray this down a couple more times and get it really clean for you. And then we'll proceed on with our flush. Now we have our top portion of our motor clean. You notice a big difference. From the way it used to look as opposed to the way it looks now. I'll spray a little more. So this is using the brush and then you spray. Alright. Now I guess you're like, well, all this spray, where is it running off to? Well, it's running down into the oil pan and mixing with the oil. So, um, you have to drain the oil. But, uh, a lot of 
little pan, I'm actually gonna use it as the plug. So as you can see how this stuff is sifting away the oil down in there. Look at that. See how that's eating away that oil? Just dissolving it, see that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the valve cover back on this car. Then we're gonna start it up and let it run for a little bit. Now the oil that's in the car is gonna provide lubrication for the bearings and um, it's gonna give you um, <coughs> lubrication for the bearings and the cleaner will be cleaning the oil, then we'll drain it and take the process a couple times. And if I get through I'll pull this front valve cover back off if I have enough time so that you can see the motor. See what it looks like. Well, actually, I'm going to pull the back cover off and replace that gasket. Then you'll see how it looks. All right, so we'll get that cover back on and get it started and get this process going here. So, this is just making full use of the chemical here. Uh, you can see how it's breaking down all that oil and old um, debris. The big chunks we um, used to brush and vacuum cleaner to suck that out. So. The little fine grit particles that are fell down in there. This cleaner, um, the brake parts cleaner here from O'Reilly. This is going to um, get that stuff broken down and then we'll drain it out through the whole thing. So you'll want to have um, you know enough oil on hand for a couple of changes and you, know, you want to change the filter each time. On this vehicle, the filter is easy to change. It's right here on top. So um, we've already changed the oil and the filter, so it's pretty new for putting the oil and the new filter in here. But uh, now that we have the skunk in here, like I say, we're going to uh, run it with the cleaner, and then we'll take it back apart. So we'll drain it and let you see what comes out of the tank, too. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, so we've got our cover back on here. Quick little tidbit. Check this little bitty wrench out. It's a little miniature wrench. I, I like it because it won't allow you to over-torque these bolts. Um, those of you who worked on stuff, those of you who have worked on stuff know how, like, um, you know, you can break bolts real easy, especially on these little thin valve cover bolts. So I recommend using a small wrench like that. An extension uh, with a wobble socket on it will help. That way you can wobble it around and still get in there. You know, especially like down on those lower bolts down there, you got to kind of hit it at an angle in order to get it. And again, with this wrench being so small, I'm not gonna over torque these bolts going in here all right okay so now we have our cover down um, we'll uh we'll actually have cleaner down in the spark plug tubes we're going to loosen the spark plug so that we'll let that uh cleaner down and then we'll replace that so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some of this parts cleaner, a little more of it into the directly into the crankcase. Now there is oil in this. Um, there is oil in this. We um, changed the oil yesterday, so now we have the brake parts cleaner as well. And also notice how clean that is. Remember when I was cleaning that out? That is um, the underside where the cap is, and as you can see, that is clean. So this stuff does a very good job of, of cleaning. Here, as you see, there. Look at that. All right, so we're going to spray this whole thing in there. Then we're going to start the car up and, and let it run. All right. So the cleaner will break down the old oil. And the oil that's in the oil pan will provide the lubrication while the chemical is doing its job. So at this point, I'm spraying one can in because remember when I had the valve cover off, I sprayed uh, what, about three or four cans. Um, in it whenever I was um, cleaning the top portion of the motor. So now we'll close the top, come over and start the vehicle up <coughs> and let it run. Now you don't want to drive the car at this point, you just want to let it, just want to let it idle. Okay.
I guess you hear that noise. Whenever we had the uh, cover off, I noticed that the timing chain guide was broken. This piece here. So what's happening is when you start this thing up and there's not enough oil pressure on the tensioner, it has a little slack in the chain. And that slack will cause that chain to slap on the timing chain, pin, the timing chain guide on this side. And this is just plastic. And what happens over time is that plastic will get brittle and break. So we'll recommend that we to the owner of this vehicle that he replaces that timing chain guide on that side. Um, as you can hear, the motor is starting to sound a little better. We'll let it run and then we'll come back and see how it's doing. We're going to let it run and warm up. And we're not going to drive it. We're not going to rev it up or anything. We're just going to let it sit here and idle. Um, we'll let it idle for about a good 30 minutes first and then we'll pick it up, drain the oil, and let it see what it looks like. But uh, hopefully, at the end of this, we'll be able to start this car up and let it run and not have the oil okay so motor's starting to heat up and you can hear the uh, ticking from the valves is starting to quieten down so it's letting us know that our clutch is starting to work okay so we're going to take this intake off and we're going to take the um, we take off and we'll take the clutch in and we'll cover off and we'll let you see the difference after this clutch. So we're going to flush it a couple times, so um, the second clutch is actually going to be a little bit more aggressive than the clutch, a little bit more cleaner than the oil. And we'll let you see what the oil looks like when it comes out. We'll uh, pull the plug and drain the oil and see what we got coming out. Of course, it's going to be black. This first oil chain is going to be really black. But mainly, what we're looking for is to see the chunkiness of debris coming out it's gonna be real watery because we have the cleaner in there so be careful it doesn't ah splat you there's the chunks coming out and that's just the cleaner and the oil that was in the vehicle there's the color there We'll flush this two more times. There's a big chunk there. More chunkage. Again, this is our first change of this flush. 